I, I was brought there. So I, I'm not just speaking because I'm zealous. I'm speaking from a life that I've been taken through, that, that, that I've walked through me. They brought me to the place of death. I have seen death. I've, seen, I've been to a place where I said to the Lord, please take my life. Take me. I don't, I don't want to live again. And he said, now you're ready to live for me. A point where you build it all and you lose it all. You lose it all. You want a journey with God? <laughs> Bible says Jesus made of himself of no reputation. You know, sometimes people think, uh, you know, they take our, you know, our silence and our quietness for stupidity. Paul said, if I must boast, I must boast in the Lord. I must boast in my tons, in the tons in my flesh. I've got tons in my flesh that I boast in. So we know where we stand and we declare our call and our apostleship. Not in the things that men pride themselves in. But in the dealings of God. In the purifying fullness of God. In being poured from one system to another. From one vessel to another. Until the fineness of his life is brought forth. And yet he's not done with us yet. We're still going through this process. Because at the end of the day, he's kept the best wine for the last. Karabaya Dababa. He's kept the best wine for the last. If you ever think that you have, you have tasted the good wine of what God is doing in this season, wait until a dimension of a new order of priesthood emerge in this new season that we're stepping into. Hallelujah. The Bible said, Saul was led into the city by this man who heard the sound but did not know what was going on. You see, when God wants to deal with you, nobody will understand. Everybody around you will think you're crazy. They'll think you've lost it, you know. And that was how people thought about me. They thought, this guy must have lost it. I mean, how can you be running from opportunity? Somebody say, I want to do this for you. And you're saying no. Well, what's wrong with you? We want to give you this opportunity. You're saying no. <laughs> Except you've seen the other side. If you have not seen the other side, you will say yes. If you, are, if you have not been open to understand the human life, you will embrace it. When, when men say, come, let's go, you say, I'm not going. When they say, we're not going, you say, come, let's go. <laughs> the ways of God are far from the ways of men. The dealings of God are far from the dealings of men. Please, humble yourself. Let God prepare you as his habitation. Let God make you his vessel. Yield your entire life to him. Say, God, here am I. I'm yielding everything, everything that I am, that I represent. I diminish completely that you may increase. God brought this man because, God, I mean, he was a chosen one. If you're a chosen man, listen, you will not understand your life. You will embrace the blindness. You will embrace the death. You will throw away your dream and embrace his dream. Don't you know God has a dream? The Father has a dream. He wants you to dream his dream. Not your own dream. Not your own dream of having the next, you know, uh, 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 God knows what. He was led into the house of Ananias. God had to speak to Ananias and say, hey, a man is coming. You are going to instruct him. You are going to help him. You are going to mentor him. You are going to build him up. You will help him. You will lay hands on him to receive back his sight. Did you see that? God did not do that. God had to use a man. Why did God, why did God have to use a man to restore Saul's sight? Because men are given the knowledge, the fragrance of his knowledge. Men are given. There are people on earth. There are men. There are people. There are vessels. There are representatives of the things of the spirit. That God, hallelujah, has invested his life in them. That when they say have sight, you have sight. That's a pattern we need to understand even in the apostolic and then as God had to bring him to that position because this guy was saying no isn't not this man that was persecuting the church because he also had a partial sight God said no this is a chosen one I've called him I've chosen him this is his mandate this is his call this is, this is his path this is his destiny and that was the beginning of the story of this great man 
who wrote one quarter of the entire Bible. This is how he began. Are you seeing the pattern that the Spirit of the Lord is showing you this morning? This is how Saul, you know, Paul, who became Paul, began the journey. That when he begins to say, let the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, he knew, he understands what he's talking about. He's not just speaking from head knowledge. He's not just speaking theory. He's speaking from experience. When he said that you may know the height, the depth, the width, the, the length, the, you know, the breadth of his love, of his grace, of his power. My God. He know. He understands what he's talking about. Won't you accept this reality this day? Won't you accept this truth? This is what we, what we talk about when we say beyond devotion. That every part of you wants him, longs for him, search for him, quest for him. David said, as the deer pants for the water, so my soul pants for you. That you want to be awakened in that position where you are forever questing after him. That you are, you are not going to give yourself rest until you behold him. Until you awake, until you are fully awake in his likeness. Hallelujah. I'm gonna stop here this morning. I feel the Lord has really impressed you know me to you know put a stop, put a pause, you know, on, on this point. So well, once again, we bless the Lord for his his glory and grace. We thank God for his wisdom and his impartation of, of life upon our life. I, I want to believe that all that you have heard, all that you have received, will continue to guide you and lead you further into, you know, his, his, his eternal plan for your life. Do not allow any situation. Do not allow any circumstance. Do not allow any person. Do not allow institution. Men, do not allow what is happening around you or across the world to stop you from that which the Father is doing in this new day. There's, a, there's, an, there's an open heaven Hallelujah. There's an open heaven over your life. There's an open heaven over your call, over your ministry. And you just keep pressing it. Take your people, journey in. Amen. They, 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 they may be a pain. They may be crying. They may be not understanding. But just say, hey, guys, we need to press in into this reality. And I can assure you, you will not be disappointed. May the Father continue to cause his face to shine upon you. May he give you rest. May he give you peace. May he supply all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. God bless you. Have yourself a wonderful day. Amen.